Holy Spirit has entitled this word, shut up and get the hell out the way. Shut up and get the hell out the way. Some of you may recall the story of Ben Johnson, the Canadian track star who competed against one of the best uh, U.S. track sprinters of all time, Carl Lewis, in 1988, the Seoul Olympics. It was anticipated that Carl Lewis would <coughs> win the gold medal, but out of nowhere, here comes Ben Johnson, who steals the gold medal from Carl Lewis. Shortly after winning the gold, reports were re released that Ben Johnson tested positive for steroids and was stripped of his gold medal. Ben Johnson was disqualified mm -hmm. from that race and eventually he received a lifetime ban in 1993 uh, from track and field because of a second incident of testing positive for steroids. Well, it's on this topic of disqualification that the Holy Ghost would have us to park for a moment in the church and deal with the strongholds that most, if not all of us, have at one time or another yes. fell victim to in our time as a believer. Right. Two biblical principles of which God would have me to establish even before dealing with the text this morning, and that is number one, that our minds must continue to be renewed by the word of God to prove, as the scripture says in Romans 12 and 3, what God's acceptable and perfect will is for our lives. But number two is that the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit, as Proverbs 18 and 21 states. We pick up in the scripture text a historical change that is about to take place within the body of Christ, with the centurion named Cornelius at the beginning of chapter 10. So I need you to keep your Bibles open, and I need you to travel along with me in the scripture text this morning. Now, a centurion was not just another man walking around in the town. A centurion was under the umbrella of the Roman Empire, and his responsibility, brothers and sisters, was to lead 100 men or soldiers enforcing the Roman Empire's authority. It was because of frequent outbreaks of violence that it was necessary, and that is violence going on with the church necessary for Roman soldiers to be stationed where they were needed. Uh -huh. Rome was the most influential power of the day, yeah. and they were serious about keeping it just that way. Yeah. Remember that the message of Jesus Christ was a risen Savior was still being spread, and it was moving very fast and quickly throughout the regions, the surrounding regions, as it related to the gospel. And because people were turning to Jesus Christ, this caused not only great violence, but it caused great influence within the community. So much so that despite Cornelius' responsibility as a Gentile and as a Roman soldier, he still began and became influenced by what was going on around him. He became influenced enough to uh, honor Jehovah God of the people of Israel. Yeah. That's why the word gives clear depiction of him in the first couple verses of, of chapter 10 of his consistency as a soldier and a follower of God. His understanding, like me, at the time was limited because he simply did not know Jesus Christ. He was doing what he knew how to do based on the old religion. That is, by fearing God, as it states in chapter 10. Mm -hmm. By giving alms to the poor, and by praying as he should. Mm -hmm. Now God took notice of him, or his sacrifice unto God. Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I want you to know that God is taking notice of you right now. Yeah. Although you may not be in full communion with the Lord Jesus Christ at this very point in your life. Yeah. I need you to know that God is still taking notice of you. Yeah. 
Because the God that we serve is not the God that has the mind that we have. Nor does he have the feelings and operate the way that we operate. But God will meet you at your point of need. And so he sees Cornelius, he sees what he is, and he has now taken notice to what Cornelius has done in his life thus far. Although when you may not be in that full communion, God is, is taking notice. So we see there are people in this world who are doing what they simply know how to do. Right. They get up every day and they do what they know how to do. Yeah. And it doesn't matter to them if it's right or wrong because that's simply all they know how to do. To do. Right. If you ask a young man why he's selling dope and hustling and to make it, most of the time he'll say, that's all that I know how to do. To do. If you ask a young lady why she keeps allowing men to treat her that way or disrespect her, what you'll find out if you just spend time with her in conversation is that's simply all she knows how to do. If you ask a father why he's distant from his children, if you ask a mother why she curses her child out and, and uses men to get what she needs, or ask a young boy why do you fight all the time and never tries to do his best in school. Right. Ask someone why they take their life's wisdom and, and they look at life's wisdom as if it was the only wisdom available to them. Right. Why would a man, he who prayed to God and, and give help to people when they ask him, but all he does is gets up and works at his job. But he never becomes a member of the body of Christ. He never brings himself to the church and becomes what God would have him to be simply why? Because that's all he knows how to do. It's amazing how everyone in the church likes to take credit for all of the souls we won for the Lord. If I did a roll call this morning and I asked someone, how many people have you brought to Jesus? Folks will have a list and they be telling you about the person that came this week and the person that came last week. But if the truth be told, we haven't done anything but bear witness to the name of Jesus Christ. And the power that works through the Holy Spirit in our lives. For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians in chapter 3, verse 7, so neither he plants nor he waters is anything. He who does that, but only God who makes things grow. For the Bible says in John 6 and 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. But God is saying this morning, I'm glad that you like to take credit for the ones from which I've drawn because there's another side of the coin that we need to think about. Yeah. In the next breath, the church does have a responsibility to continue to grow up and work out that perfect will for which God has for our lives. Yes, the church must take accountability, brothers and sisters, for the times in our walk when Jesus, or, or the times in our walk for when we have not embraced the things for which God would have us to do. The people around us who, who are up until this point have just been doing what they know how to do. But the first encounter that they've had with someone of the body of Christ, it leaves them, Father, confused about what choice should they make. And I want to be very clear this morning that God is speaking to the house right now. That although we know Jesus, and although we walk with Jesus, and although we pray to Jesus, and we know what the word of God says, there are times in our life when we become a stumbling block to those who want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we do that. We do know that. The Apostle Peter, in one breath, confesses through the power of the Holy Spirit in Matthew 16, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but my Father in heaven. And then in the next breath, when Jesus was predicting his death on the cross, it was that same Apostle Peter 
who pulled Jesus to the side and said, Jesus, you must be tricked. He pulled Jesus to the side and said, Jesus, you must need to get some sleep. Because Jesus was explaining to them that at that time that he was about to die on the cross. And Peter said, there is no way that you're about to leave us after we have left all and sacrificed all to serve you. But Jesus said, just as he praised Peter when he spoke correctly, Jesus checked him even harder when he was out of line. Because Jesus said in Matthew 